A very dear colleague, Honorable Justice Anish Dabos, my brother and sister judges, Mr. R. Venkatramani, Attorney General for India, Mr. Tushar Mehta, Solicitor General for India, Dr. Adish Agarwal, President, Supreme Court Bar Association, Mr. Sukumar Patijoshi, Vice President, President Manoj Mishra of the ESCORA, and office bearers and members of SCB and SCORA, ladies and gentlemen. To bid farewell to a colleague on the bench is a bittersweet task. The moment simultaneously serves as an occasion to look back at their historic tenure, but lament the void that they leave behind. Today marks yet another bittersweet moment. While bidding them farewell at retirement, we honor our colleagues for their work on the bench and for their abiding friendship. I have the honor of bidding a fond goodbye to my dear colleague, Justice Anirudh Dabos, as he demits office after serving the Supreme Court for close to five years, while dedicating this evening to recognizing his contributions. The contributions of Justice Bose to this court, the Calcutta High Court and the High Court of Jharkhand, have left an indelible mark on our legal landscape. For this, Anirudh, the legal fraternity will forever be grateful. Now, for the next 30 seconds, for what I'm going to say, I'll beg pardon of the Bangla knowing audience, particularly my dear brothers Anirudh and Dipankar, and then, of course, Jaydeep at the bar and so many others. Let me say this. Bicharpati Sri Anirudh Dabosh, Ekjon classical Bangali Bhadralok. Tini Shobabe Ekjon Bhalo Shrota Tini Shoti Karer Buddhijibi Kokono Prokashe Bichar Karenna Justice Bose Shahityo Itihash Rajniti Linguistics Dharma or Darshaner Ekjon Bishishto Patak Bichar Pati Bosher Madhya Juger Bhakti Movement Air Prabhab, Shampar ke Gabir Gyan Ebong Dharna Ache, Bhagavad Gita Ebong Shri Shri Ramkrishna Kathamitra, Onar Kubi Priyaboy. Lastly, Bangali Bhadralo Khote Hole, Oti Obashoi, Dhuti Punjabi Porte Hoi, Ar Fudi Hote Hoi. Justice Bosch Sampurna qualify Karun Dutu Dei. Justice Anirudh Bose is a classical Bengali Bhadralok. His disposition is that of a good listener and a true intellectual who never gets overtly judgmental, even when he is judging in the court. He is a voracious reader with an abiding interest in literature, history, politics, linguistics, and the impact of theological philosophies on the various world cultures and societies over the centuries. Justice Bose has an in-depth knowledge of the profound impact of the Bhakti movement in India during the Middle Ages and is a veritable authority on Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. At a very personal level, he has an abiding bond with the Bhagavad Gita and Sri Sri Ramkrishna Kathamitra. And of course, one cannot qualify as a true Bengali Bhadralok without a sartorial preference for the Dhuti Punjabi and without being a diehard foodie. Justice Bose handsomely qualifies with respect to both. <laughs> Justice Bose has not only been a stellar judge, but before being elevated to the Calcutta High Court in 2004, he was also an outstanding lawyer. He has the unique experience of working at an intellectual property law firm prior to his elevation to the bench which gave him unique insights into the specialized field before commencing his journey as a judge. While practicing before the Calcutta High Court, Justice Bose handled a diverse array of cases, both constitutional and civil, with an emphasis on intellectual property. He practiced on both the original and the appellate sides of the High Court, a wide spectrum of experiences that is evident in his versatility as a judge. Aniruddha can grapple with a complex set of facts in high-stake commercial and civil disputes as effectively as he can adjudicate significant questions of public law and personal liberty. I should know better at the number of requests I have got in the last one week for listing all the pending cases before him that belong to his bench. 
In many ways, nearly two decades of experience at the bar explains his ability to empathize and credit members of the bar for their contributions to the judiciary. Recently, while addressing the members of the Supreme Court Bar Association, Justice Bose spoke about the metaphorical umbilical cord that a judge has with the bar. He made an interesting observation about how, although our legal system may be adversarial between the parties to the dispute, the relationship between the bar and the bench is collaborative. Justice Bose graciously admitted that while judges get credit for their judgments, they heavily rely on the assistance provided by members of the bar. I must, of course, add here that it is only because of the patience and encouragement extended by judges like Justice Bose that our Supreme Court bar can navigate complex questions of law and construct creative arguments. Just like a judge cannot do without an erudite and diligent bar, the bar too needs empathetic and accommodating judges like Justice Bose to truly flourish. Justice Bose has been a trailblazer in modernizing the judiciary, advocating for a technology-friendly judiciary throughout his career. As a judge of the Supreme Court, he swiftly embraced new technology, seamlessly transitioning to hybrid hearings and digital files. Notably, as a judge of the Calcutta High Court, Justice Bose was one of the earliest proponents of using video conferencing to ensure access to justice and greater courtroom transparency. Back in 2012, Justice Bose, sitting as a single judge of the Calcutta High Court, allowed a litigant from the United States to appear on a video conferencing platform in a case pertaining to medical negligence. Similarly, in 2015, Justice Bose allowed for the proceedings in a case before his court to be video and audio recorded in certain exceptional circumstances to ensure transparency in the proceedings. Justice Bose's adeptness in leveraging technology to increase access is a testament to the fact that there is no age barrier to adopting technology. All one requires is good intent and a willingness to embrace change. During his tenure at the Supreme Court, Justice Bose has been an integral part of landmark decisions on issues of public interest such as data privacy, the independence of the Election Commission, animal rights and affirmative action. He authored several decisions on criminal law, including interpretative questions about special statutes such as the Prevention of Corruption Act and the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. Significantly, Justice Bose has always kept civil liberties at the forefront of his decision making while adjudicating cases concerning the grant of bail and incarceration. Justice Bose was a part of the bench in Union of India versus K.A. Najib in 2021, where our court recognized that prolonged pretrial incarceration violates Article 21 and can be a ground for a constitutional court to grant bail, despite the presence of rigorous statutory provisions. In Narayan Chetanram Chaudhary versus State of Maharashtra in 2023, Justice Bose set aside the death penalty imposed on a man in prison for 28 years, observing that he was a juvenile on the date of the commission of the offence. The court held that while determining the age of the accused or convict on his plea of juvenility, a decision must not be taken solely for the reason that the offence is heinous or grave. In addition to the contributions to criminal law made by him, Justice Bose has also made the court richer with precedence in service law arbitration and commercial law. For judges, particularly those as hardworking and meticulous as Justice Bose, retirement signifies the end of their tenure and the duties they have performed with utmost dedication. However, it also brings with it the silver lining of finally having more time for himself, for those loved ones, for leisure and the simple pleasures of life. On a lighter note, Aniruddha, as you retire from the Supreme Court, I hope that you finally find time for more enjoyable hearings of your favorite movies and songs and perhaps even preside over family dinners where the only arguments are about what to eat for dessert or better skill over the preparation of Betki or Tulsosh Sandesh. As this towering figure from Kolkata demits office of the Supreme Court, it would be apt to quote a famous Bengali song that symbolizes the emotions that the bench and the bar share today for you. The song from the classic Bengali film Saptapadi 
was sung by the iconic Hemant Mukherjee in 1961. It is titled, Ipo Jodi Nasesh Hoye Tobe Kemon Hoto Tumi Boloto, which translates to, If this journey never ends, then tell me, how would it be? Indeed, while Justice Bose's tenure may come to an end, the journey will never end. Every time we have the privilege of relying on the pithy and precise precedents authored by Justice Bose, we will fondly remember his ever smiling and encouraging face as he sat on the bench. There is a lot to be said about judges like Justice Anirudh Bose, who prefer to remain far away from the limelight. His love and expertise with respect to intellectual property laws was little known until I shared it with you. His ideological moorings are towards the politics of democratic discourse and a thrust towards equitable distribution of resources. Son of late Somin Bose, a legal luminary of the Calcutta High Court, Justice Bose's brother Prabuddha and sister Pompey are practicing lawyers in Kolkata. Justice Bose lost his wife Madhumita, a reputed business journalist, to a terminal disease. I share with him the sense of loss having gone through such a tragedy myself. After that intense personal tragedy, he single-handedly looked after his daughter Manjurika and son Anish, now writer and a scientist. All this while uncompromisingly discharging his judicial duties as a judge of the Calcutta High Court and thereafter as the Chief Justice of the Jharkhand High Court. Aniruddha, as we all know, has a keen interest in the teaching of the law and had our unanimous vote to helm the National Judicial Academy at Bhopal as director, which I am sure he will lead with greater heights in the coming year. <laughs> Justice, Justice Bose's favorite songs, Jamaican Farewell, Guantanamara, his favorite plays, Vijay Tendulkar's Kanyadan, Mahesh Eklunswar's Party, and Lust for Life by Irving Stone, and Dylan Thomas's Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night, shows the eclecticism in his reading and listening. For me personally, he would always share an article in The Economist worth sharing, and a book on grammar and more. I thought that was a reminder that my grammar also needed tightening up. In the frenetic pace of our lives, Justice Bose inspires us to pause and rejuvenate our minds in books, poetry, and music. We have learned a lot from the quiet resolve of Justice Anirudh Bose, and I bid him farewell in the lines of Walt Whitman, his favorite poet. Let your soul stand cool and composed before a million universes. Fare thee well, Anirudh. Wish you health, happiness, and fulfillment for all times to come. It was truly an honor to serve on the Supreme Court as your colleague, Justice Bose. I wish you all the very best. <laughs>